Hey, what's going on, guys? Adam Ronan still here for day number 25. Yesterday, I talked a little bit about confabulation, which is taking all the information around you and making false memories. <laughs> taking all that stuff and thinking back two years ago when you were in the coffee shop talking to that one person about that one thing, and then all of a sudden you realize that you just created a whole bunch of stuff to make sense of the world around you. So we're going to talk a little bit about memorization and forming correct memories. So. We want to get better memories. Why? Well, because the better we get at making good memories, the better we are recalling those memories and therefore being able to learn effectively and so on. So, a couple things really quick. Um, first thing we have to, well, remember to remember. <laughs> I mean, you can try to remember, but if you don't remember to remember, how are you going to remember, right? I know. Now, an old school method would be with those little strings around the fingers and, um, and, it's a Wonderful Life. Um, one of the characters actually has several around his fingers and he actually ends up forgetting uh, which one means which. And that's a problem because you could say a string around the finger has the equation of string around finger, finger equals one. One equals a memory. Or absence of string around finger equals zero, which is absence of memory. But the problem is what the heck is the memory? So we have to have some kind of association. Um, so, in the idea of prospective memory, um, you, do, you might do this already naturally, but things within proximity of their relevance has a huge impact on being able to recall the information. For example, if you're about to run out of gas and you take, um, let's say you don't have time to get gas right when you notice your light, you got home and you're tired, and you go inside, well, you take a little sticky note and you put it... Um, right by where your, your gas sign would be, uh, your little gas light in your car. So when you go back in there, you see this blatantly obvious thing that's drawing your attention and it's in proximity to the item which is relevant. A lot of us may have done this where we don't want to forget our briefcase or whatever. Ladies probably don't want to forget their purse, so they leave it right by the door so they had to practically trip over it to be able to leave. You know. If it's in proximity, it's a lot easier to remember. Now, another technique we can use is overloading. Now, this is giving several characteristics to a single memory. And um, visualization is just so magical. And the more abstract and more nutty you are with it, the better results you get. Um, for an example, if you had three things to have to remember, if I had three things I needed to remember in order, um, or out of order, it doesn't matter for some of them, um, let's say I wanted to get gas. Let's say that I wanted to go check out the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, which is a pretty good book. You should probably check it out. And um, let's say that I had to remember I had a meeting later on. Okay, well, those three things. Let's take those and just make a crazy scenario. Um, now, um, I heard this story from a gentleman before. His name was Ron. I forget his last name right now. But he, you know, typically we wear a wristwatch. Um, with the face facing towards us. Well, tell you what, if you take that wristwatch and you put it upside down, that's a little irritating. It's it's not really comfortable, so it's gonna kinda be like nagging at your arm. Now that's a remember to remember something, but as for the actual memory, you can associate these three different stories with the, I'm sorry, this one image with these three different topics you're trying to go. Now imagine for a second that gasoline is spilling out and actually visualize this. Like when you're trying to make the memory, you would visualize gasoline just spilling out of your watch, for example, and it catches something on fire. <laughs> it catches a book on fire and it's rich dad, poor dad. Or it's like spraying out money, you know? Something like that. Robert Kiyosaki's running all around. Um, and then you can say that out of that fire, a whole bunch of people come to put it out and they're... Um, they're meeting up to figure out how to correct the situation, you know. It's kind of a goofy thing, but the sillier it is, the more real it is. The more likely you're to remember. You know, you want to make silly, ridiculous stories in reference to what you're trying to remember. And you put them in one, like, quick image that takes you less than a second to recall. And then, boom, you got all your memories right there. So, you got the thing to make you remember that you're remembering. And then you have the actual content, what you're remembering. So, um, it also helps to have a checklist. Now, I would say 100% you want to remember these things as best you can without any kind of reference because we don't want our brain to atrophy in a sense. 
um, and be reliant on lists and lists. But what is a healthy practice is taking the information, putting it on a list, the things you're going to take with you on a regular basis every single day, day in, day out when you're leaving your house. Putting them on the list, and as soon as you walk out that door, think about, do I have everything? Blah, 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 blah. And then look through your list because I'll tell you what, why not make it from 1% margin of error to zero? You know, it's some simple little things you can do to, hey, and obviously just get rid of that problem, that nuisance. Um, another thing is to mentally picture what you're about to do earlier in the day. Just visualize it. Just sit there and say, what am I about to do? And then visualize and plan, prioritize what you're planning on doing. And you're more likely to recall it later on, more than just saying, oh, I'll remember it later on. Um, more things than specifically when it comes to memory and um, you can create something called a memory dungeon or a memory map. And what this is, is the brain can take you these amazing um, photographic memories of places especially that you're familiar with. And if you were to remember that you needed just a list of a whole bunch of stuff like a grocery list of milk, eggs, blah, 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 blah. Well, you just take a familiar room in your house Hopefully you're familiar with your whole house, but you just take one of those rooms and you just put all the objects around the house. And then um, when you're visualizing, you look around and you see all those objects and you're like, oh, I need the milk and the eggs. And there are crazy ass spots and, you know, they're hanging off of the chandeliers and stuff like that. And, um, but you don't have to use your house. Matter of fact, you can use, like, if you're familiar with a video game, you can use a dungeon from there. You can, you ever play old school Doom? Something like that? If you remember the first level, Knee Deep in the Dead, and you remember that first map, so good because you played it hundreds of times like I have, then um, you can just visualize there, and you know, you got these demons and stuff running around to you, you'll have to ignore them, but if you go through the game and um, try to become more familiar with it, you can place these objects in those dungeons, and it just, it makes it a lot easier to recall. You know, the brain does not just look at a list of stuff and find it that exciting, but when you put it into a, a surrounding that's just magical and just abstract and crazy, now we're talking. That's some crazy memories right there. Um, yeah, that's about it right there. Um, hopefully you found some kind of value in this content, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.